uh, top panel here is uh, one of the important elements here. So we have this top panel fixed layer, which is the, the fixed is, is what's going to make it float on top of everything. And then on top of that, we have this top background layer with a gradient overlay. And we can just take a look at the gradient. You see it's a, it's a semi-transparent gradient from black to transparent. How do you make that? Well, that's, that's actually an um, important thing to know if you haven't used uh, this feature of Photoshop before. Um, basically, uh, the way the, you've got color stops in a gradient and you've got transparency stops. So we can change the color of a gradient by clicking on these bottom stops, but the upper stops are where we actually change the transparency. So you click on one, and I can come down here and change this to be opacity 100, and we're going from solid color uh, red to solid color white, and it hides everything underneath it. You can see in the document in the background. But if instead I change this stop to be 0%, you'll see now it's going from solid color red to completely transparent white. So you, you really barely even see the white. It just sort of influences the, the, the color of the red as it goes away. If we don't want it to do that, we can change it to red as well down here. And that'll subtly change the effect. Um, but the main thing here is uh, the, the, the e you can also do this by creating a semi-transparent tile in Photoshop, but that's a little more involved process. I find uh, gradients a lot easier for this sort of shadowy effect disappearing off the top of the page effect. And again, when you uh, open up SiteGrinder, you will have the opportunity in the compression panel to set the uh, compression for the background layer here. And you'll want to set it to PNG 24. And then finally, there's actually uh, one other thing that you need to do, because SiteGrinder uses the way these things appear in the document when it renders. And notice what happens if I set my fill to 100. Whoops. Let me switch back to Photoshop here. When I set my fill to 100, it, uh, it, it, it obscures everything because it actually, it actually makes the sort of background of our layer 100% uh, opaque. But if I drop that down, then all we see is the effect. And so you need to do that to get the correct, uh, correct effect here. And you need to set your, your panel's fill to 0% as well. So for this, this, uh, this kind of repeating gradient tile uh, that's also semi-transparent and goes from both sides, uh, goes from one side of the browser window to the other. Um, those are sort of the steps. And again, this is all covered in the wiki uh, for the um, uh, fixed hint. And uh, also, uh, there are a lot of new examples, by the way, uh, on the footer documentation page. That page has been completely rewritten um, and includes a number of different examples um, and approaches. Uh, so again, the, uh, the panel, um, being reminded to remind you that the panel layer does need to extend all the way from the left to the right of the browser window for SiteGrinder to assume that you want it to repeat all the way to the edges of the browser window, no matter how wide the browser gets. Otherwise, you'll get one like what we were looking at before, which is uh, just sort of there, like a little island, but it doesn't extend to the edges of the browser window. What I want to do now is move on, since we're talking about headers, and, and, and briefly talk about the new header hint. Now, the header hint is essentially a convenience hint. It doesn't really uh, do anything vis-a-vis -vis headers uh, that's different from what SiteGrinder did before. What it does is just make that easier. So a, a header, uh, let's go ahead and look in the one is it this one I think so so this one has uh, the new header background right here so I'm gonna hide everything else so you can see what it is so prior to site render 3.5 you could have had this exact same layer and named it browser dash background and and it would have had exactly the same effect um, but uh, it would have been a little trickier to use basically the way that you tell browser backgrounds uh, how they're supposed to repeat is by carefully positioning them. Um, and so for a header effect, you position it touching the top, the left, and the right of the Photoshop document. Header background doesn't have that requirement. Header background knows whatever this tile or gradient is on this layer should just repeat at the top of the page. So it's more convenient uh, by a little bit than the, than the browser uh, background layer. But what's 
what's more important is that it now frees up your browser background layer. So because, because you don't have to use the browser background hint for a repeating tile across the top of your document, now you can use the browser background hint to do things like uh, place fixed images behind the content of, of your document, that kind of thing. So that um, there, you know, all of the things that you can do with the bra ba browser background color, you can now do in addition to having a header. So you no longer have to use the browser background hint as a header. Um, and that's, that's really the main convenience um, of the header background. Headers are much less complicated than footers because uh, there's no possibility that anything is between the top of the browser window and the header. The header is always uh, at the very top of your content, whereas footers have to move up and down based on changing uh, vertical size of content that happens all the time, whether your site visitor is changing the size of their fonts or whether you are going in with the, the content editor and adding or taking away text. Um, things like that. So footers are, are more complex. So the header background is very simple hint, um, works very much like the browser background worked. Um, it just uh, is, an, is a way, a new way of achieving this effect. So you can use the browser background hint for all the other things that it can do.